Hello students, in this video we'll see how to construct a portfolio with minimal risk subject to a expected return constraint. So let's consider a portfolio with n stocks. I will denote the returns k1 through kn, their returns. My portfolio will have a return that is a combination of these returns, a convex combination, where these weights or proportions have to add up to be 1. This condition is equivalent to saying that the vector w of weights with a vector of all ones, inner products to one. We can therefore find what the expected value of this is, so the expected return m will be w1 m1, where m1 is the expected value of k1, plus w n m n. And we can write this condition, this is equivalent to saying the vector w and the vector m of returns equals a fixed number m. So those are constraints of the problem. So here's one constraint of the problem and here's another constraint of the problem. The weights have to add up to one and the expected values have to satisfy this inner product relationship. Now I can find what the risk is. I can find the variance of my portfolio. The variance of my portfolio has the form w dot product or inner product c w, which is the same thing as we've been writing as w c w, where C is the matrix of covariances. So I will have covariance of K1, K1, covariance of K1, K2, covariance of K1, Kn, covariance of Kn, K1, covariance of Kn, Kn. And this is my covariance matrix. We can note that the covariance matrix has a special property that C is equal to C transpose, it's symmetric, and also that C is positive definite since it arises as a variance. Now we ask the question, how do we minimize this problem subject to constraints? So I would like to minimize the variance of Kp, which will equivalently minimize the standard deviation of Kp, or the risk, subject to the constraints that W with the ones is one and W M is equal to M. So to do this we set up the Lagrange multiplier method. So Lagrange multipliers imply that the gradient of the variance of Kp is proportional to a linear combination of the gradient of my constraints. So we can see that what will happen is when I compute the derivative of this, I will get 2, the matrix C applied to W, will be equal to lambda. The derivative of this condition will simply just be all of these ones. But now to make sure that I have M in the right dimensions, I'll put a transpose here since this is an N rows by one thing, plus sigma times the vector M. This tells me that W is one half C inverse of lambda, lambda, lambda transpose plus one half C inverse of sigma M. So once we have this relationship, 
it's sufficient to find what lambda and sigma will be. To do so, we will note that if I take this pink box equation and dot it with a whole bunch of ones, w dot a whole bunch of ones is equal to one. And if I dot w with the vector m, I will get m, and that will be m dot the box. And so what we have here is we have two equations, two unknowns. We have one is equal to the vector of ones dot the box, and m is the vector m dot the boxed equation, where this is my box. These are two equations to unknowns. We can use these two equations to unknowns. And that means we can find, from these two equations to unknowns, both lambda and sigma. Once we find lambda and sigma, we plug them back into the box equation. And we have a formula for the weight vector w, which tells me the weight vector for the minimum variance portfolio given this mass constraint. We can notice that this formula will only depend on the parameter m, which shows us that the minimum variance portfolio, it can be parameterized by the mean, which gives us a way of computing the efficient frontier of a collection of portfolios. Thank you very much.